when I'm reading the astronomical literature, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking, can this be fodder for a deep sky video? Uh, and so whenever I see something with a Messier object in it, I grab that one and I call dibs on it and I say that's the one I'm going to talk about. A uh, title caught my attention because it had spectacular tales of ionized gas in the Virgo cluster galaxy NGC 4569. And so if something says it's spectacular, I'm going to go and have a look. And sure enough, it was a really interesting paper. And NGC 4569 also happens to be known as Messier 90. So this is the paper that caught my eye. This is a picture of our friend M90 in optical light. Gorgeous. False color image. It is gorgeous. It's a beautiful spiral galaxy on the outskirts of the Virgo cluster. So the Virgo cluster contains a lot of Messier objects. What you can see is it's, it's an example of what we call kind of an anemic spiral. <laughs> So it's a spiral that's not doing a whole lot, at least not in its outskirts. So it's got these very tightly wound spiral arms, but there's not a lot going on there. There's not a lot of star formation happening, not a lot of new stars being born. That's not the case in the center. The center has a nuclear starburst. It's the opposite. You know, lots of gas being confer converted at a high rate to stars in the middle. Action-packed CBD, boring suburbs. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's already a kind of interesting galaxy in its own right. What's interesting about this paper is that when you look at this galaxy in a certain way, using a certain imaging technique, you can reveal a specific component of the galaxy, which is the hot gas. And when we're trying to find out how star formation gets switched off in galaxies, which is a really hot topic and the topic of some of my research, we want to be able to trace not just where the stars are, but where the gas is as well. This is the central region of the Virgo cluster. You see M87, the big giant galaxy sitting at the middle, big round elliptical. And this is our friend M90 up here. This image is what it looks like in H alpha. So that's tracing the hot gas. It's been expanded by a factor of about six just to emphasize the features in this image relative to the rest of the cluster. What you can see is that our beautiful spiral galaxy no longer looks so uh, nice and neat and symmetric. In fact, there's big streamers of gas being pulled out of this galaxy and trailing behind it. Because what's happening is M90 is actually moving through the cluster. It's probably coming from behind and moving towards us and also the, the way these streamers are streaming out in one direction probably means it's coming from the right-hand side of the image towards the left. What happens when a galaxy falls into a cluster is that it encounters a number of different external forces. It encounters the gravitational potential well of the cluster, which can exert tidal forces and change the distribution of stars in the galaxy. But what you're seeing here is a textbook example of something called ram pressure stripping. Now, what's happening is that what you, another invisible thing that you don't see here, another really important component of this cluster, is a huge reservoir of hot gas. If you look at it in the x-rays, you can see it because it's glowing at millions of degrees. But what that means is when a galaxy comes into the cluster, it essentially slams into this ball of gas. It exerts, that, that gas exerts a drag force on the, the galaxy itself and can rip out material from the galaxy and, and leave it streaming behind. Exactly the same as sticking your hand out the window when you're driving in a car, you know? The air is not moving, but because of your velocity, you feel a force pushing back on your hand. And in fact, it, it, it depends on the density of the medium, whether it's the air or the hot gas here, and it depends on how fast you're going. Uh, and it depends on the square of that property. So if you go twice as fast, it takes four times the effort to overcome air resistance. Anybody who's ridden a bicycle can probably attest to that. All of that hot gas that's in the cluster, mm -hmm. it's between the galaxies. Yes. Where yeah. did it come from? Well, the galaxies are only the bits of the gas in the universe that have been converted into stars. The structure in the universe is made up of a number of components. Most of it is a cosmic web of invisible dark matter. Attached to that is a cosmic web of gas. 
in different phases, hot and cold. Most of the gas in the universe is actually hydrogen that's sitting out there between the galaxies waiting to be turned into stars. Still? Still. Still. Stars and galaxies, they're just the little floaty bits. They're the, they're the sprinkles on top of this vast sea of gas and dark matter. M90 wasn't part of this cluster. It was like its own, it was its own galaxy, was it? And it just wandered on into this gang. That's how clusters grow. They start small. All structure in the universe starts small and through the overwhelming force of gravity pulls in material from around it, whether it's gas or galaxies or dark matter. The bigger the cluster gets, the more it can pull in, and, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it's a very typical uh, experience for a galaxy near a cluster to start falling in. What will happen to this galaxy in future, I don't know. Most of the time it doesn't have enough velocity to get out of the potential well of the cluster, and so it may be what we call a backsplash galaxy. It may be something that goes out to the suburbs, turns around and then falls back in and eventually gets bound and stays the rest of its days, you know, orbiting around the center of the cluster. Um, that's, I think, probably what's likely to happen, but I don't know for sure. But what's important is what's happened to it on the way, on the journey. Within this galaxy, it's got stars, it's got dust, it's got cold gas from which it forms new stars, and it's probably got a halo of hot gas, a reservoir that, that drains down and feeds future star formation. Some, if not all of that gas, is being stripped out of it. It's being pulled out because it's plunging into this hot intracluster medium and slamming into this hot gas. And so the gas within the galaxy is getting stripped out, which means it's not able in future to form more stars. And many of us are trying to understand how galaxies in the center of clusters look so old and round and red, compared to the galaxies that live outside of the clusters, which tend to be bluer and have more active star formation. And so this provides a really important piece of the puzzle, which is actually showing this transformation in, ha in progress, taking this material out so that more stars aren't able to form in future. What this galaxy is losing at the moment, what's streaming off this galaxy, isn't like stars and planets and things. It's basically its wispy fuel tank of gas that surrounds it. In this case, that's correct. Now, this is a, a kind of class of galaxy that we're, we're starting to be able to study now, and it, they've been given the name jellyfish galaxies for obvious reasons. And sometimes when you look at jellyfish galaxies, you actually see in these tentacles little knots of star formation. And so the gas is being stripped out, but at the same time it's being compressed and, and forming some stars. That's not the case here. Uh, so we don't see star formation associated with these tendrils. And you can see that really clearly. If you look at this beautiful composite in image, now we're combining the different wavelengths. You've got the optical image of the, the galaxy here, and then the red is showing you this hot gas in H alpha. And you can see um, that it's not associated with lots of star formation like, like you see in the center of the, the, the cluster, which means that something else is ionizing this gas, you know, putting energy in to, to raise the electrons to higher energy levels. That could be something to do with the stripping process shocks. It could be something to do with magnetic fields, which in astronomy is usually what you invoke if you don't know what's going on. It's probably magnetic fields. It seems a, a pretty clear-cut case in this, in, for this galaxy um, that, that that's what's driving this transformation. There's a few peculiar things about the Sun. It's not quite like all the stars in the vicinity of the Sun, so it looks like it came from somewhere different. So it will be good to figure out where it did come from. And this conclusively proved that the distance to M31 was such that it is actually 2.5 million light years away outside our galaxy.